SpaceX has finally unveiled the latest iteration of its super-heavy boosters, called Booster 9. After the last Starship test flight exploded due to critical engine issues, SpaceX decided to use this new, upgraded booster in the upcoming test. But how better is this booster compared to its predecessors? Will it finally be the one to take Starship into orbit? Stay tuned to find out. The massive Booster 9 weighs in at a whopping 300 tons empty and is capable of holding no less than 3,000 tons of propellant. SpaceX is leaving no stone unturned in making the Starship Super Heavy the best it can be. It's no surprise that Booster 9 comes with over a thousand improvements compared to its predecessor. There's no denying that Super Heavy is an enormous accomplishment in rocket engineering. We must applaud Elon Musk for having the audacity to take on the challenge of constructing such a colossal structure. It's clear that Elon has a personal agenda driving him. He's motivated by his ambition to assist humanity in colonizing Mars. Elon recognizes the importance of becoming a species that inhabits multiple planets. He believes this is crucial in reducing the risk of extinction and also sees great value in the excitement and significance of exploring space, which will ultimately benefit billions of people worldwide. But the Starship isn't just for Mars colonization. This magnificent spacecraft has a range of other applications. It is specifically designed to transport NASA astronauts to the moon, as well as to launch satellites into orbit and undertake important missions for the government and private customers. Elon Musk refers to the Starship as the ultimate goal of space travel. It's an impressive sight, measuring approximately 69 meters in length. The Super Heavy Booster, which is an integral part of the Starship, is almost as tall as two-stage Falcon 9 or Falcon Heavy rockets combined. With a width of 9 meters, the Super Heavy Booster is essentially a massive steel tube capable of holding at least six or seven times more propellant than the Falcon 9 and about two to three times more than the Falcon Heavy. The number of engines and the peak thrust of the Super Heavy are equally impressive. In fact, the Super Heavy is relatively simpler compared to its Starship upper stage, which requires two types of Raptor engines, flaps, a belly flop maneuvering system, and other components. However, at the base of the booster, SpaceX faces the challenge of designing, fabricating, and assembling an incredibly intricate mechanical structure. This structure needs to accommodate the mounting, fueling, and powering of numerous Raptor engines, creating quite a complex and tightly packed configuration. In addition to its complexity, the structure and plumbing of the Super Heavy must be incredibly robust. They need to withstand immense forces and pressures generated by over 2,000 metric tons of cryogenic liquid oxygen, as well as the staggering 7,500 tons of thrust produced by the Raptors. And that's just the minimum requirement. Beyond the extraordinary mechanical stress, the thrust section of the Super Heavy also faces the daunting task of surviving the intense and turbulent environment created by nearly three dozen powerful rocket engines. Meanwhile, the structure is partially submerged in cryogenic fluid, subjecting the puck and dome to extremely harsh thermal conditions. Last but certainly not least, the outer shell of Super Heavy's thrust structure must withstand the extreme mechanical and thermal stresses of hypersonic atmospheric re-entry without any form of cushioning. It's a brutal environment that requires exceptional resilience. Furthermore, the Super Heavy's engine will require an extensive network of plumbing, this plumbing system will handle highly flammable and explosive substances, as well as high-pressure liquid and gaseous methane and oxygen. Connecting all 33 Raptors to the power supplies and avionics systems of the Super Heavy also demands an extensive amount of wiring, spanning for miles. Fortunately, Booster 9 incorporates several design changes that enhance its functionality. These improvements include the implementation of sleeker raceways, which are external conduits that protect the wiring. The plumbing system has also been made more compact, and there is a different arrangement of pressure vessels and hydraulic power units. Additionally, an umbilical panel has been installed at the rear of the booster, and significant modifications have been made to the aero covers that fit over the hardware located at the back. Besides the Raptor engines, there are two notable modifications in Super Heavy Booster 9. Firstly, there are a pair of aero-shaped covers that resemble straight lines, these covers are positioned over two new sets of five composite overwrap pressure vessels, COPVs, that extend about one-third of the way up the booster's tanks. These aero covers have sharp edges and serve a purpose similar to wing structures, enhancing the aerodynamic stability of the booster. 
In contrast, the previous version, Super Heavy B4, had four sets of two COPVs evenly distributed around the outside of its engine section. Another notable change in Super Heavy Booster 9 is the introduction of an upgraded version of the Raptor engine. While the combustion-related hardware is likely similar to the Raptor 5.2 engines found on Booster 7, Ship 24, and Ship 25, the hardware responsible for steering each engine, known as Thrust Vector Control, TVC, has undergone a complete overhaul. This means that the mechanism used to control the direction of thrust for each engine has been entirely redesigned. Instead of relying on a complex system of plumbing and hydraulic power units attached to the side, the 13 central Raptors of Super Heavy Booster 9 will now be controlled electrically. This advancement has enabled SpaceX to eliminate the need for those power units, resulting in a more streamlined exterior for Booster 9. Additionally, it has reduced the already intricate network of plumbing required for fueling, control, power, and steering of the numerous high-performance rocket engines on a single booster. Once all 33 engines are installed, Booster 9 will probably undergo comprehensive testing. This is done to ensure that all 13 electrically steered engines work seamlessly together before, during, and after numerous static fire tests. SpaceX will also need to validate that the batteries, which are likely powering these new systems, perform as expected under the extreme stresses they will encounter. The electric thrust vector control, TVC system, may need to swiftly redirect over 3,000 tons of thrust multiple times per second. As a consequence, the power demands placed on Super Heavy's batteries are expected to be tremendous. The peak power required from these batteries is likely to be immense, considering the dynamic nature of the electric TVC system. The reusable Super Heavy first stage is equipped with an impressive array of 33 Raptor engines that run on methane fuel. In contrast, the Starship's second stage is fitted with six Raptor engines. Initially, the design plan involved the engines of Super Heavy shutting down after propelling the Starship out of the lower atmosphere. At this point, the Starship would separate from the Super Heavy and ignite its engines to continue its journey toward orbit. In addition to its other missions, SpaceX is developing a variant of the Starship to function as a lunar lander for NASA's Artemis program. However, during the maiden flight of Super Heavy, a few setbacks occurred. Approximately six engines either shut down or failed to start, preventing the separation of the Starship from the first stage of Super Heavy. After reaching an altitude of only around 24 miles, the entire vehicle began tumbling and descended about six miles before the self-destruct system was triggered. The self-destruct mechanism took longer than anticipated to activate, resulting in the destruction of the rocket. For its second flight, Elon Musk revealed a significant modification to the stage separation system. The new approach, known as hot staging, involves the Starship's engines igniting before all of the super-heavy engines have shut down. This technique, which has been employed for years in Russian rockets, is expected to enhance the performance of the Super Heavy Starship. By initiating engine firing earlier in the separation process, Musk anticipates improved efficiency and overall mission capabilities. Lastly, Booster 9's grid fins have been updated with extra plates on their exterior surfaces, potentially providing added strength to resist warping. These grid fins differ from those of Booster 7. Moreover, Elon Musk mentioned in a recent interview that he believes having four grid fins on a spacecraft is excessive. He expressed his preference for two grid fins, and at most, three if the third one is considerably smaller. Interestingly, this aligns with the design concept showcased in SpaceX's 2016 rendering of the Interplanetary Transport System. As of now, no changes have been observed in the booster. However, it's important to note that modifications and improvements are common in the iterative design process of rocket development, and future changes to the booster cannot be ruled out. When Starship Super Heavy eventually makes its way to the launch pad for its next test flight, it is expected to become the tallest, most powerful, and most reliable launch vehicle ever created. This is largely thanks to SpaceX's approach to rocket design and production characterized by continuous tweaking and improvement. Rather than following a slow and cautious approach toward developing a predetermined final product, SpaceX adopts an iterative methodology. They aim to create a minimum viable product 
and then gradually enhance or even replace previous concepts, designs, and hardware as they progress toward achieving their overarching goals. And historically speaking, SpaceX has a tremendous track record of success when it comes to achieving these goals. It will be interesting to see how the company tackles the mission to Mars. Do you think the Starship is capable enough to take humans to the Red Planet? Please share your thoughts in the comments below.